this is going to change things around here. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and in this box is the Anycubic i3 Mega S. Now, although this is my first 3D printer, it's not a newly released printer. This printer has been out for over a year, maybe close to two years, and it's just a slightly upgraded version of their i3 Mega printer, which has been out for, well, a long time. So this isn't really gonna be a full review of this 3D printer. Those have been done, there are plenty out there from reviewers who focus on 3D printers. I know, I've watched them all when trying to decide which printer I wanted to buy. It was those mostly positive reviews coupled with the fact that I was able to get this printer for $209 thanks to Anycubic's Christmas sale. That sealed the deal for me, so not a review per se, but I will be unboxing, assembling, prepping the printer as well as printing my first ever 3D model and sharing my experience and thoughts with you. Now, to be honest, I wasn't gonna do this video at all. I bought this printer to help out with projects that I do on the channel so I can do things like make my own parts and components for custom builds and things like that, but that's behind the scenes stuff that I usually keep behind the scenes. However, two things convinced me to share this with y'all. First is, I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes and purchase and use a lot of equipment for my day-to-day -day workflow that you guys never actually see, like all this stuff back here. And I typically don't highlight my work stuff on the channel because by the time I buy it, it's not new and has been extensively covered by the more established reviewers. In fact, I'm probably like a lot of you, before making a major purchase or even a moderate purchase, I wait for the reviews. In fact, I bought my Sound Blaster K3 Plus DAC after watching a review from Jeff on Craft Computing. My PreSonus Studio Monitors because of Nick's from Gear Seekers Review. My Samsung mic, Epos Vox, of course. Eber from Hardware Canucks convinced me to give the Corsair SK650 keyboard a try, and I got the idea to buy and use a gaming mouse for video editing after watching a Paul's hardware video. So I figured why redo stuff others have done and done well, but because I'm not just a reviewer on YouTube, but a watcher of YouTube reviews, I know I like a variety of views and opinions, and some of the best reviews are from people who've used the products for a long time and can share their experience based on long-term use. Remember that as I come to the second reason I'm filming this today, and that's because the stuff I normally cover, like all this stuff, CPUs, GPUs, all those PC components, in general just aren't available right now with maybe the exception of RAM and storage. And I'm like you, with the exception of a few really cool companies, I don't just get stuff sent to me to make content about. I'm not complaining, I'm a small channel and I have to keep working hard towards that. So if I can't buy it, I can't cover it. And really, if you can't buy it, there's no point in covering it anyway. I'm not gonna do a like PC build guide video if you can't actually buy 80% of the components to follow the guide. But you can buy this printer right now and you can very likely find all that stuff behind me too. So because of those two reasons, for the next several weeks, I'm gonna change up the direction of my content, starting with this 3D printer. Today, I'm gonna share my initial impressions and then probably in several months, I'll follow up with my long-term use thoughts. I'll also be doing the same with some of this stuff behind me. I'll cover some of this stuff I just showed you and share my thoughts now that I've used most of it almost daily for a year or more. And then when PC components are readily available again, I'll start covering that type of stuff. But what do you guys think? Is there anything in particular like back here that you'd like to see my long-term thoughts on? I mean, if so, let me know in the comments. 
Okay, that's that. Now let's get this printer out of the box and assembled. So I guess first thing right off the bat, it's packaged really, really well. So basically the printer comes in two parts and then our hardware and extra components are here. So assembly's pretty straightforward. You just attach the print arm to the base with eight bolts, four per side, and it's as simple as that. Got black on the bottom, green in the middle, and then red on the top. And then this last white one should plug into my filament sensor here. Right there on the bottom. Oh. So I'm gonna just flip it over to 110. Now I'm just ready to plug it in. Okay, now I gotta level this platform. So I'm gonna need this piece of paper. And turn it on. Cute. Okay, now I'm gonna go to tools. Home and Home Z. I'm going to say that's my first issue. So this cable for the motor on this side actually got pinned between the end stop switch and the motor. So it made this side motor stop and this one kept going. All right, let me try that again. Turn this little knob so that, so it should just touch the paper and you can feel it just grab the paper, but not touch the print base itself. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, so the next problem, there's a act, there's a wire back here. It looks like it controls the bed heater that's actually zip tied to the leveling screw on this back corner. And that just that prevents that screw from turning to actually level that bed. And I actually screwed the knob right off because that screw can't turn. Here's the problem number two. So the next thing I need to do is just load the filament. And to do that, I'm gonna raise my print head. Let's go to axis and then I'm gonna go filament. Filament in. And then filament there through the filament sensor. go. Now into the extruder. Okay, now that I've reached the 230 degrees, which is the target temperature, I should just be able to hit filament in.
All right, I'll stop. Okay, now I should be ready to print my first 3D model. Now the SD card comes with a test model already installed, or it should. So just insert the SD card, print owl pair, and print. Now, the nozzle temp and the bed temp, once that gets up to the right temperature, the printing should start. Okay, so initial thoughts. First, packaging and included stuff, awesome. That was some serious amount of foam protecting this printer, no issues there. The stuff it comes with, I mean, there's an entire hot end assembly with nozzle and Bowden tube attached right in the box. All the tools you need for assembly, an SD card, an SD card reader, the extra tools like this print removal tool. I mean, this is pretty high quality for a $200 printer, plus I thought this came with a little pair of tweezers, but mine came with a really nice set of side cutters. And this, I think this is for cleaning the nozzle. Either that or it's an acupuncture needle, I don't know. It even comes with several meters of PLA, which coincidentally looks like enough to print the owl couple model that's preloaded on the SD card. As far as assembly, it was simple and straightforward. Two main parts, the top bolted into the bottom, four wires to plug in, and then the spool holder. The directions were pretty easy to follow, no issues. Now, as far as setup, that's where I ran into a few minor issues. The first was probably partly my fault. This cable here got stuck and tripped the end stop on this side. I should have checked to make sure all the moving parts had clear paths to travel. No harm though, I freed the cable and the two sides leveled themselves back out. Now, the second cable issue wasn't my fault and I have no idea why this wire was zip tied to that print bed leveling screw. I mean, I see why it was secured because free like this, it can interfere with large prints. I mean, if the print bed travels back far enough, this wire can come over the top of it and make contact with the print or even the print head. But because it was tied to the leveling screw and spring, I couldn't adjust that corner of the print bed to level it. Good thing they gave me some flush cutters. Finally, leveling the bed did take some time. Every time I'd level the four corners, I'd come back and one of the quarters would be off. I lost count of how many times I went back and forth to each corner, but it took quite a bit of fine tuning to get it level, but it did level and overall from the box to ready to print was pretty fast. Now, this is my first 3D printer and these are the first ever models I 3D printed myself, but I am familiar with the process. I've been doing 3D design and modeling for years and I've designed and sent files for 3D parts off to be printed and sent back to me many times, so I know what to expect from 3D prints, and these came out pretty good. Now, again, this model was just preloaded on the SD card, so I'm not exactly sure what settings were used, but it looks like a slightly larger layer height, maybe 0.3, it could be draft, but then it has a pretty dense infill, so probably not the settings I'd go with for a model of this scale, but it is what it is. Now, overall, the model came out good, but on the back, you can see some of the layers got a little wonky here and there. Now, I think this happened because my workbench here, where the printer was sitting, is 
not stable it's real shaky and it was shaking a bit when these were printing so i moved the printer to its permanent location which is very stabled and printed this benchy this is a common model used to benchmark 3d printers so i downloaded it and sliced it in cura using pretty much default settings these settings to be exact and benchy came out pretty good there were some issues down here at the start but after about the 25 percent point it's pretty much perfect i mean not perfect but better than i'd expect from a 200 dollars printer on the first print and finally i printed some practical parts these AIO tube combs. Now, these aren't my design. I found them on Thingiverse and just modified them to fit my AIO tubes. I'll leave the link to them in the description below. I further refined some of the settings and they came out great. They just need a little sanding and they should work well in my gaming PC. Things like this is why I bought the printer. So print quality is good, but the printing, well, all the reviewers agreed and I can confirm this printer is loud but that's okay I knew it would be and I have a plan I'm gonna replace the stepper drivers replace all the fans build an enclosure for it, and pull the power supply and mount it outside of the enclosure now of course I could have just bought a more quiet printer with all that stuff already done but what kind of fun is that now the plan was to do all that stuff behind the scenes but I don't know, maybe I'll do it on camera. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on all that. And if you do, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you would like to see more videos on the printer, then you probably like this one, so make sure you click that below. But that's it for this one, guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.